Hi, I'm Keith Holder, the new band teacher at Washington Middle School. Welcome to band. Welcome to our open house uh, curriculum night or curriculum day, depending on, on when you're uh, viewing this. Um, this presentation will tell you a little bit about all three band classes that we have at Washington Middle School. First, a little bit about me, especially since, again, I am new to Washington Middle School. Uh, I'm not new to the Olympia area, not new to the Olympia School District. I actually have grown up in Olympia my whole life. Um, I've been with the Olympia School District technically since 1976 when I started kindergarten at Roosevelt Elementary School. I did fifth grade band at Roosevelt and then went on to play in band at Reeves and, and went to Olympia High School, was involved in music, of course, at Olympia High School. Then I had the unique opportunity to, after I finished college, to come back and teach at my alma mater. So I did six years of teaching high school band at Olympia High School. And then for the last 20 years, I've been teaching band at Jefferson Middle School. And the whole time, I'm also teaching fifth grade band. So I've been teaching fifth grade band now. I guess this is 26 years of teaching fifth grade band. And this year, I'm at Washington Middle School along with uh, Centennial Madison, McKinney, and Pioneer Elementary Schools. Um, so in addition to the, the multi-level band teaching that I've been doing, um, I've also been a performer in the area uh, for close to 30 years. I've been a private instructor in the area, giving private trumpet lessons. And then also importantly, I've been a parent, still a parent. Um, we have four children of our own, and all four of them have uh, gone through Washington Middle School. All four of them have been involved in band. And uh, we have our, our two youngest are still at home. Our, our youngest daughter actually just left Washington Middle School this last year. So I guess it's safe for me to, to come to Washington now. All the older children are gone. Um, and our son is a trumpet player. He's over uh, continuing his trumpet studies in Spokane at Whitworth University. And our daughter, our oldest daughter, is over in Spokane as well. I tried to bring all those different perspectives, um, having taught fifth grade band and having taught high school band and middle school band for many years. And then also the perspective of private instruction and being a performer and being a parent. I try to bring all those perspectives uh, to problem solving and lesson planning as we're, uh, we're moving through the school year. So it, it, is, it is fun to try to problem solve with all those different uh, perspectives. Uh, one other little nugget of information uh, from our summer. This was our, our summer project. Uh, here's a picture of the fam uh, with our new son-in-law. Our oldest daughter got married. This last summer, again, that's a, you're looking at four Washington Middle School graduates there. So that was our summer project, doing a, a graduation and a, a wedding in the middle of a global pandemic. Good stuff. Um, for for band this year, uh, the, the materials and some of the things you're going to need for success, uh, hopefully most uh, families have gotten these items already. Uh, we're using a book called Essential Elements. If you are in the sixth grade cadet band, we're using Essential Elements Book 2, and you can see it's this uh, red book over here. If you're in the seventh or eighth grade groups, the symphonic bands or concert band, uh, we're using a book called Essential Technique, and that's kind of a book three book. And uh, both those books are available at the local music stores. I would call ahead to see, make sure they have the book for your instrument. Uh, and if not, you can order it online. Um, the, the neat thing about both those books, and one of the reasons we chose to use these books this year, is they have a really uh, robust uh, internet interactive uh, feature to them. So there's uh, it's called Essential Elements Interactive. And when you purchase the book, there's an activation code that you put in and gives you access to these online resources that makes practicing at home a little more enjoyable and uh, gives you some more resources online that we'll be uh, directing kids to throughout the year. So our books will be used most every day in class. Uh, many of our playing tests will come from the books. Um, sort of the main way that we will be helping uh, the students develop technique this year. If you need help getting the book or any of the other supplies that you might need for your instrument reads or valve oil or cleaning supplies, if you have questions about any of that, please feel free to email me. Uh, we, can, we can certainly help with that. In terms of what we'll be learning this year in band, um, one of the basic things that we're going to do in, in all three classes is develop our technique. Um, we have kids in all three of the bands that are starting either new to an instrument, maybe they've switched instruments, or maybe they're new to band uh, in, in general. 
Um, so we'll be developing technique, whether the kids are uh, more advanced or brand new. Uh, everyone's going to be working on their technique. Um, so that's individual instruments that uh, individual kids are working on those skills. And again, the book is going to be great for that. And we're looking for silver linings, I guess, uh, in this uh, difficult remote teaching and learning environment. Uh, one of the silver linings is kids can really move at their own pace. So I want the kids that are able to move a little quicker through the book and through some of the exercises and other resources we'll be providing. We want people to develop their technique as quickly and efficiently as they can. Uh, and by the same token, if kids are a little behind or they're brand new, it gives them the, the ability at home to use some of the resources that we provided to help catch up and uh, develop their uh, basic techniques as well. And the whole reason to uh, develop your technique and do that nitty gritty practice is so you can have enjoyment. So you can enjoy what you're doing. The, the better you get at something, the more you're going to enjoy doing it. Um, we're also going to be working on ensemble skills, things that uh, you need as a musician to play with others. Um, even though we're, we're at a distance right now, we are still going to be working on uh, skills like that. Things like tuning and blending and balancing. We are going to find ways to collaborate with each other also, even though we're doing distance learning right now. There's some great tools uh, that we have online to use for that, um, that we'll find ways to still be able to make music together. So we, we will be collaborating with one another. It's still fun to make music together. And I think especially um, as we're doing this online learning, uh, learning an instrument's hard anyway, when you're doing it in person, when you're trying to be taught in person, it's hard to learn an instrument, but it's even more difficult in a lot of ways to do it over the internet. I can't show you where your hands go on the instrument. I can't physically grab the instrument and put it in the right direction. So it's a little trickier. Um, but learning an instrument is a great challenge. It, it presents all sorts of opportunities for challenges. And that's a great way to develop grit. And that's a, that's a great characteristic to develop in a student. Uh, it can be applied to lots of other areas in their life. So there'll be plenty of opportunities to develop grit this year. And then we're also going to be talking uh, specifically and also uh, more in more general terms about what is our why? Why are we, why are we learning an instrument? Why do we play music? Um, and, and we're going to try to uh, be inspirational and, and cultivate a little more enthusiasm and, and passion for uh, making music and, and learning about their instrument. In terms of how grading works, especially uh, for the sixth graders in, in, in band in fifth grade, we didn't really have a grade at all. Um, in seventh and eighth grade uh, band, you're, you're probably used to getting a grade in band from last year. But the way the grading is working uh, so far this year, anyhow, is 40% of the, of the student's grade is going to be in participation. And uh, real briefly, um, it's the best way to participate right now is on Zoom. That's all we've got. And if there's any way that we can encourage kids to have their cameras on during our Zoom meetings, um, that makes it way easier for me to teach if I can't see how they're holding the instrument and see how it's going into their faces or how they're holding their drumsticks. It, it puts us at a real disadvantage for, for teaching. So if there's any way, I know there's some, uh, some situations where the internet's going to explode if you turn on your camera or the Wi-Fi will break down. If there's any way to get that camera on, that helps with participation a lot. But there are other ways by um, putting things in the chat or by answering questions or raising your hand or asking questions even with the video off. There are other ways to participate and, and get the, that part of your grade. Um, so we do want uh, kids to be participating on Zoom to whatever uh, level they can, the highest level possible. And, and really what I've been trying to explain to the kids over the last couple of weeks, especially, is that the communication part is really key. So if, if you really are in a situation where you can't have your camera on uh, and you can't make comments or you can't answer questions, it, it's good for me as a teacher to know why that is. So if you could send me a quick email, uh, let me know if, if one particular day you're not going to be able to participate, you're not going to be able to have your camera on, that just helps me again to know uh, how to best help you uh, with participation. So that's 40% of your grade. It is still a hands-on activity where we do need kids to be um, playing that instrument uh, live with instruction. Um, homework is 20% of your grade. That's uh, out of class practice time. Um, the way we're grading that right now is we're, uh, we have a weekly practice plan that's currently on a Google form that kids fill out, and then a, a weekly practice summary. And the basic idea of that is um, that it's more important how we practice and what we're practicing. That's more important 
than how long we practice. So I always explain to the kids that, you know, if you go baseball practice and you practice swinging a baseball bat like that for an hour, you just got worse at baseball. So similarly, you can practice your instrument for an hour and end up worse than when you started if you don't have a solid plan. So we're talking a lot about how to practice, what are your goals, how to be efficient with your practicing. Um, so that's what the practice plan and practice summary will will do. And those are all uh, in Schoology and the access to those are in Schoology and uh, they're completed on quick Google Forms. Um, there are there already have been some playing tests. That's 20 percent of the students grade. Um, right now we're using video playing tests. That's the best way for me, again, to help kids if I can see what's going on and hear what's going on at the same time. That gives me the, the, the most amount of input for giving a good sort of feedback to students about their playing. Um, right now we're doing our video testing inside of Schoology. Uh, we will eventually start using Flipgrid here before too long as well. And then we'll have some other music theory assessments, things like note names and rhythms and things like that. We'll do some testing in that area as well. And then 20% of the grade is, uh, or I'm just calling it projects, things like uh, collaborative projects we'll do, um, eventually performances perhaps, other things that we'll be creating. So there's a 20% a part of the grade that will be those uh, sort of collaborative projects. Here's a real quick look into the Schoology class. Uh, this is the symphonic band class. This is the page that the students go to when they log into Schoology. You can see down here, there's um, the some links to send me an email to get to that Essential Elements Interactive website and then to join our Zoom class. So that's where uh, the kids are taken when they log into Schoology. Probably the most important page is the materials page. And this is uh, the different folders I have set up. Right now there's five folders and I try to keep things organized in here. There's always at the top is the this week folder. So things that are due this week. Um, there's a practice summary and a practice plan due this week. We don't have a playing test due uh, this week, well, depending on when you're watching this. And then there's a folder that uh, has past due assignments that we move things from the red folder to the yellow folder. The green folder is uh, particularly important. That's where the music is at. So. Um, there's some Google Drive folders that I have links to that I, I put music in for the kids um, to be able to uh, either download or read uh, digitally off the screen. Um, there's instructions on how to do all of that. So I've made some instructional videos on how to get to the fundamentals folder, how to access your music. So if there's any questions about how to do things, this orange folder is a good place to check. And then there's some other resources. Um, I'm putting some fun videos. It's back to that, uh, that part of the learning, the inspiration and the passion and the enthusiasm. So I have some other resources and uh, some other things like uh, practice reading note names, some games online and things like that to help with that. So that's this is sort of the hub for Schoology. If uh, there's anything that they're missing, anything they need to know, all the assignments, all the music is on the materials page of Schoology in these five folders. Um, we've already had some questions about jazz band. Uh, jazz band is something extra that has been going on at Washington Middle School and a lot of middle schools. We did it at Jefferson Middle School as well. Um, it happens outside of the, the class of the, the class periods outside of the school day. Um, we're still working on because we're going to be doing some collaboration with the Olympia High School jazz band and, and hopefully some uh, artists and residents sort of opportunities. We're still working on the details of exactly when those rehearsals will be. Um, I am relatively confident we'll be starting the week of October 19th. And uh, it, it, again, a little unsure as to whether or not that's going to be for be before the school day or at the end of the school day. So just stay tuned for details. And this is an opportunity for seventh and eighth graders only. Um, we, we need a, a certain skill level to be in place in order to do some of the music theory things and improvisation and uh, things like that that we'll be doing. Um, but any seventh and eighth grade band student, so uh, especially this year, um, if even if you don't play a traditional jazz band instrument, if you play bassoon or you play oboe or uh, you want to come and play some different percussion instruments, all fine. So if you're in seventh or eighth grade, that's a great opportunity uh, for you. And just stay tuned about details on that. We'll have details uh, coming from that in class. 
Finally, just I uh, didn't mention uh, back when we were talking about assignments. Yes, it's fine to turn in late work. There, there is, uh, there are quite a handful of kids that have gotten a little bit behind on their playing tests and things like that. So please encourage your students to to get the work turned in. It's not meant to be an overwhelming workload. Um, it's just meant to be resources to help them improve their instruments. So please. Uh, Get that late work in. Uh, we will. I will accept it, but uh, we don't want to encourage to continue to stay behind. Of course. Okay. Uh, how to help your student in band? This is a tricky one, especially if you don't have uh, any instrumental experience yourself. Sometimes it might feel like I don't know how I'm supposed to help. Um, simple things like just giving encouragement. Again, I mentioned uh, before that playing an instrument is really difficult, uh, and, and even kids that are uh, it comes to them more easily. As they continue to challenge themselves, they're going to get to these little speed bumps that they're going to need some encouragement from you and from, from me to get over these little speed bumps in their learning journeys. So please encourage uh, your students to take on those challenges. And to, it's okay to struggle. It's okay to sound bad. It's okay to have to practice and fail and, and fail and fail and then get better. Um, all those things, that's good stuff. That's uh, what's going to build a, a real solid musician. And then, of course, logistics. Um, I know everyone's building uh, home learning environments and trying to find desks. And, and uh, if you have multiple kids doing multiple things, plus you got a kid trying to play uh, saxophone in the background, <laughs> all, that's, all that's pretty complicated. So um, anything you can do to provide a, an environment where uh, it makes sense for someone to be playing an instrument. I've seen kids out in the yard, in the garage, uh, whatever works in your particular situation, but providing that actual physical space and then helping your student come up with uh, just other logistics, like when are they going to practice? How long are they going to practice? Things like that. And I always tell parents, if you never ever hear them playing their instrument. It's it's highly unlikely that they're only practicing when you're not at home. So uh, that leads us to our next section here. Ask some questions like, did you practice? Could you play something for me? Ask for a little mini concert, request a tune. Um, and and if they're if they're feeling discouraged or if they're feeling confused or if you have any questions, just uh, again, I just uh, ask that you'd encourage your students to reach out to me by email and uh, we can get all that stuff uh, figured out. That sort of wraps things up. If you have any other questions, any concerns, any ideas, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, email is by far the best way to do it. I'm here to help. I want your kids to be successful in music. I want them to have fun playing their instruments. Uh, so thanks a lot for, for watching the presentation tonight. And again, feel free to reach out if you have any additional questions.